Hi, my name is Matt Hinkle with MS FireNet. Today we're going to be going over some more advanced friction loss for firefighters. Uh, if you have not seen our basic friction loss video, you probably want to go back and look at that because that's going to go over the basic friction loss formulas and how friction loss is derived. Uh, to start off, in order to, to determine friction loss, we need to know how much water is being delivered onto the fire. Uh, so when we get into a little bit more advanced methods, we're talking about master streams, stack tips that are smooth bores, um, aerial devices, standpipe systems, sprinkler systems, and things like that. So one of the first things we need to know how to do is how to calculate how much water is coming out of an orifice, especially if we're using a smooth bore nozzle. Uh, typically, if we're using a fog nozzle, the fog nozzles operate at usually 100 psi, but it's manufacturer's specification, so it depends on what your department is using. A lot of departments use smooth bore hand lines for high rise packs, and that's because the nozzles, smooth, smooth bore nozzles on hand lines generally operate at 50 psi, whereas smooth bore master streams are generally going to operate at 80 psi. So to start off, I'm going to show you how to calculate how much water is coming out of the nozzle for smooth bores. This is a set of stack tips uh, with a one inch tip at the top, so we can unscrew that and get different gallonages. Um, so the first thing we need to know is are we using this as a hand line or a master stream? So I'm going to calculate a one inch tip as a master stream, which means it operates at 80 psi. Okay, so I've written out the formula and worked it out on the board. Uh, we start off with 29.7 as the constant uh, that's used in the formula. We multiply that times the square of the diameter, so diameter squared, which is going to be one squared because we're using a one inch tip. Uh, and then we're going to multiply that times the square root of nozzle pressure which the nozzle pressure is going to be 80 psi because we're using the nozzle as a master stream, not as a hand line. Uh, so as we work it out, 29.7 times 1 squared is 1, so we'll simplify it. And then the square root of 80 is going to be 8.94. So when we multiply it, we get 29.7 times 1 times 8.94, which is going to end up being 265 gallons per minute that's coming out of that master stream nozzle at 80 psi. Okay, I'm going to do the exact same formula, but instead of using 80 psi for our nozzle pressure, I'm going to change it to 50 psi. So we're going to say that we're using a one inch nozzle on a hand line now, basically like a high rise pack or something like that. Um, you'll have to find out what your department uses as, as far as the nozzle tip size. I'm just going to use one inch because that's what we just used in the 80 psi. So using this as a hand line instead of a master stream, the only thing that we change is the nozzle pressure. So it's going to be 29.7 times diameter squared, which was a one inch tip, times the square root of the nozzle pressure, which is 50. So we worked the problem out, 29.7 times one, times the square root of 50, and that's gonna end up giving us a gallon per minute of 210 gallons per minute. Here's a list of some of the things that you need to keep in mind when you're, when you're calculating your pump discharge pressure and your friction loss. Uh, your elevation pressure, you'll add five PSI for every 10 feet, or Divide the height in half. Just make sure that when you're doing it for a high rise, you don't count the first four. You only count the fours above the first four. Nozzle pressure, usually they're gonna be 50, 80, or 100, uh, but there are a lot of nozzles out there that operate at 75 PSI. Appliances, if we flow more than 350 gallons per minute through the appliance, we need to add 10 PSI for the friction loss. That's just a, a rule of thumb. And same thing for master streams. When we're using a master stream, we want to add 25 PSI of friction loss for the master stream. All right, this is something that we use that's pretty easy to do on the fire ground in your head, and that's the condensed Q method. Um, and this generally we use for three inch, four inch, and five inch supply lines uh, when we're on the fire ground. It's a pretty easy formula. The key is knowing what Q squared is. Q squared is actually the quantity of water divided by 100 squared. So it's in hundreds of gallons per minute. Um, so for an example, I wrote 1,000 GPM. And what it means is if we're flowing 1,000 GPM through a three inch line, we take Q and square it. So the quantity of water in hundreds, uh, Q is actually going to be 10 squared because it's 1,000 in hundreds, which is 10. And then we square that. And that's going to tell us we have 100 PSI friction loss per 100 feet in a three inch line. When we go up to four inch, Q squared, that's gonna be the same number, 1,000 divided by 100 is 10. So 10 squared, we're back to 100. 100 divided by five is 20 PSI uh, per 100 feet on a four inch line. When we go up to five inch, we do the same thing, Q squared divided by 15, 
uh, and we end up getting 6.6 .6 PSI on the 5 inch line. So Q squared stays, stays the same. When you have a 3 inch line, it's just Q squared. When you have a 4 inch line, you'll divide that by 5. When you have a 5 inch line, you'll divide that by 15. And that gives you a pretty good rule of thumb as to what your pressure loss is, uh, your friction loss is, per 100 feet of line that, you, that you're supplying. Okay, I've set up a little scenario here, a real typical problem, but I want you to use the condensed Q method to figure out the friction loss. And this is where it comes in handy because you can do this in your head uh, pretty easily. The scenario is you have a pumper supplying a monitor uh, and it is flowing 500 gallons per minute. If you notice, I drew a triangle uh, basically backwards, so I'm saying it's a fog nozzle. And fog nozzles are generally going to operate at 100 PSI. We've got 200 foot of 3 inch line that's supplying this monitor and we need to know what our pump discharge pressure is. So we just start filling in the blanks that we know. We know a rule is we need to add 25 PSI because it's a master stream. So I go ahead and write in plus 25 for that. Our nozzle pressure, we know it needs to be 100 PSI because it's a fog nozzle. So we already know that the master stream with the fog nozzle is going to add 125 PSI to the pump discharge pressure. So how do we use the condensed Q method? The, the condensed Q method for a 3 inch line is just Q squared. Uh, we know the quantity is 500 gallons per minute, so I'm going to work it out and make it a little more clear. Q squared. Uh, Q is going to be hundreds of gallons per minute. We're at 500 gallons per minute, so that is five hundreds of gallons per minute. So we just do 500 divided by 100 to get Q. So 500 divided by 100 squared is actually what it's going to look like. And all that's going to be is 5 squared, which equals 25. So that tells us that for every 100 feet of 3 inch line, we have 25 PSI friction loss. Uh, so this problem is really easy. We have 200 feet, so we have 50 PSI of friction loss in the hose line. We have 25 PSI because it's a master stream and we have 100 PSI for the nozzle. And we just add those together to get our pump discharge pressure. We don't have any elevation here so that would, that would change the formula up but because we don't have any elevation uh, the answer is going to be 175 PSI. So I showed you some tricks using the condensed Q method with 3 inch, 4 inch, and 5 inch line. Uh, let's show you a nice rule of thumb for 2.5 inch line. This is a great fire ground method. It's not extremely accurate, but it gives you a, something really easy to do in your head if you're, if you're trying to figure out what your pump discharge pressure is. The way we do this for 2.5 inch hose line, we call it drop the zero, subtract 10. And all that means is uh, we, we're doing uh, how much water is coming out of the hose dropping the zero and subtracting 10. So if we have 200 gallons a minute coming out of a two inch line, two and a half inch line, we're going to use 200 gallons per minute. We'll drop the zero off the end of it. That gives us 20. And then we'll subtract 10. And that means that there are 10 PSI friction loss per 100 feet of line. If we do 500 gallons a minute, we'll drop the zero, subtract 10. That's going to be 40. PSI per 100 feet. So the key here is remembering that this is for every 100 feet of line. This is not going to tell you your total. So if you have 300 foot of two and a half inch line out there, you'll need to multiply that number times three. Uh, so that's pretty important that you remember to do that.